Welcome to the second talk today. The next speaker is Andrew Mleschko, and he will give us a short overview about how we can build uh, our project management for our dreams. Andrew? Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming uh, to see my talk. Uh, yeah, as, uh, as you just heard, I would like to show you today our recent use case about uh, uh, project management software. We've built something uh, in our company, uh, and I think uh, we have found several uh, things that you may be found interesting. So, okay, let's start. Yes, you just heard I'm, my name is Andrew. And I'm coming from Red Turtle. It's, uh, we are based in Ferrara, Italy. And we are building web applications, uh, mainly in, in Python, Plone, and Pyramid. And yeah, that's, that's what we do uh, for a living. And of course, we are an IT company, so uh, our projects are in, in this sector. And we are used to to have some kind of a, of, a, of a tool that helps you to manage the project properly. So it helps you to manage the whole process. And it probably is the same as with everybody else in that room, right? So all of you has your own uh, type of tool you like. I don't know, probably it's track or maybe Plone, extreme management or whatever else the, the tool is. But everybody needs it, right? You cannot run. Even a very okay, very small project, maybe you can run without any tool. You can just do it in a few weeks, and it will work. But if you are talking about a few weeks, few months, or few years uh, duration of a project, you need to have some kind of tool that helps you to integrate uh, the team, helps you to to know where you are exactly in the project uh, process, and so on. So we all need it. But what exactly is uh, is a project management software, right? There are a lot of uh, examples. There are a lot of a lot of terms that describes this type of software, and this list is not not, not finished. I mean, you can put here uh, probably other other things, but for us and for me right now, I will focus on those uh, seven uh, things. So it's this groupware, so a collaboration between the team. It's uh, it's issue tracking, so back tracking, whatever you call it. Scheduling, so the tool that allows you to to plan your project, you plan task in advance. Workload, so a tool uh, that allows you to um, to book time uh, for everything you do. So then later you can create reports based on that. How much time group of people, how much time a team spend on the task, on back, back fixing or development features, and so on. Resource management, which is related a little bit to scheduling, because it allows you to uh, to make also a report and to see uh, who's uh, what is happening in the in the project right now, right? So what is happening with certain person? How much free developers you have? If, if a new customer approach, if you can start the new project or not? So this is of course obviously the resource management. The document management is of course yeah, it's it's, it's easy to describe. It's all the information you are collecting during the project development and the project uh, uh, when the project proceeds, and reports, uh, yeah, all kind of reports, uh, reports about uh, the technical reports about how many bugs you have, how many bugs you solve, and so on. But also the reports uh, from the customer point of view. I mean, all the customers would like to know what is the pro what is the progress uh, w in which moment of the project uh, development we are right now. So those kind of reports as well. So this is, this is for us uh, a project management software. This is the idea. And of course, you have a choice, right? You can choose from an existing uh, tools in a web. Uh, this is just an example of the, the tools you can find. Probably there are much, much more uh, in on a web 
just just by curiosity, how much of you uh, of, of, of people here are using truck, for example? Yeah, just thirty percent maybe. And plone for for project management. Plone for project management, extreme management. There's this, there's an add-on like that. Somebody. Okay, nice to know. Okay, so this is just an example of uh, of the tools you can find. They are not covering probably all of the things that I've mentioned before. So for instance, track doesn't allow you to do everything I've just mentioned, but only part of it, right? The same with Plone. Plone cannot do everything, but a part of it probably yes. And the same with Redmine and, and all the others. And this, is, this was al also our story, right? We have also started to use partly Plone for some things track. And it was not bad, right? But the, the point is that none of those tools is doing everything you need. And most of them sucks. And for many reasons, right? The first thing is that, as, as I said, they are not good in some tasks. They are good in some tasks, but not in all, right? So you like track. It's good in backtracking. For, for us, it's perfect. We are used to it. We like it. The reports are fine, but you cannot build a good workload there, right? We don't like the workload. You, there are some add-ons that allows you to, to, to keep your bookings there, to keep that time tracking and so on, but it's not nice. Then there's the problem of security, right? We'd like to have tickets that are internal, but they are not exposed to the customer, but we would like to also have the feature that the customer is able to automatically fill a bug. But then we'd like to keep the internal communication separate from the customer. It is doable in track, but it's not so obvious, not so easy. The other problem is that every company is an island, right? So every company, especially the, 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 the small and medium ones, they, have, they don't have a very structured process of project management, right? So everybody has their own idea how the project should run. Somebody is more agile, somebody is less agile, and so on. And it's difficult to find a tool that will exactly fit your needs, right? That will exactly solve all your problems. So probably, yeah, you will find something and then you would like to tune it up a little bit, right? You would like to add some different reports. You would like to integrate with something else. But most of them, most of them that we have found, they don't have an easy way to integrate other software, right? Now, and a part of that, they, most of the cases, they, they, they leak a good API. They don't have it. Or they have it just for a very, very basic features. And of course, the minority is in Python, so automatically it minimizes the possibility to, to write your own plugin, because we would like to do it in Python, that's not a problem, but okay, for track, you can of course do something in Python, but for the others, it's not so common. And even if they are uh, in different languages, they are mostly not open source, so you don't have even the possibility to write anything easily. So those are, those are the common problems for us, right? You have the tools, you have some kind, you have some needs, you have some problems, but it's difficult to, to solve those kind of problems with an existing tools. So for us, you don't have really a choice. The choice for us is to build your own tool. Yes. And that's why we've built Penelope. And this is the project that we have started in 2011. Uh, three companies started it. They are all based in Italy. They are very nearby. I mean, uh, there's an area of probably 100 kilometers, maybe less. <coughs> so there's Red Turtle, Biotech, and Elogic. They are all from a very similar sector, so they have similar projects. They have similar problems, and they wanted to. They have exactly, and they have to the same. They, they ended with the same conclusions, right? That we have some kind of tools but they are not solving our problems. And that's why we have started the project together. Probably the first thing you ask is that it's quite expensive, right? I mean, to build something really sophisticated, something that will work, that will be stable, because all your projects depends on that software, it needs to be stable. It ex it's expensive, right? It is expensive, of course. But you can try to do something to minimize the risk and to find some kind of co-founding. And this is what we also did. We have we have get we, we get some money from the from the European Union from the Red, European Regional Development Fund, 
So they had founded a part of this project because they think this will improve the inno in, in, in innovation in the region. Because probably it will, right? We will try to improve also our project management with that too. So, so this is also an idea for if somebody else would like to try, maybe you can follow the same road. So we have get the, 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 the co-founding. Thanks to that, we have minimized a little bit the risk uh, of yeah, even failing with the project itself, because if you need to, to found it totally from your own money, probably it will be more difficult and we will not try it. But thanks to this founding, it was, it was easier to start. So as I said, the project started in 2011, but from the beginning it was planned to be a long-term project. We didn't plan to finish in a few months and to have something already working. Because first of all, we didn't, we knew, as I said at the beginning, we knew that we have problems with existing software, but it was difficult for us to, ex to describe where exactly the problem lay. So for example, uh, we knew that the problem is with the security in the issue tracker, right? So the customer shouldn't see everything. The developers should see also probably 80%. The project manager should see everything. But we didn't know exactly where the line should go. I mean, what exactly we would like to achieve. That's why our idea was we are starting the long-term long project. We'll try to build the documentation and the specification when the project, uh, ongoing of the project, let's say like that. So, but of course, we didn't want to, 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 to not finish it at all. So we have made the first deadline. So we would like to, we, we wanted to have something, something uh, usable at a certain date. Uh, and that's why more or less in this, in, in February, March, we are starting to, to test it internally, the alpha or even beta version, let's say. Something that is already working, doesn't cover all, uh, doesn't all cover all the features, doesn't fix all the problems, but it has the minimal functionality, which I will show you later. And then the next step after that is basically an ongoing development, right? We, we want to spend certain percent of our uh, iter every iteration to improve the software it itself. So that's, that's, that's the idea of the long-term project. The other important factor of, 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 of Penelope is that we are focusing on integration. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, right? We don't want to build an, a yet another backtracker or whatever. We want to integrate things. So this is also the experience we have from other projects. We have been successfully integrating Plon with Pyramid uh, and with also other uh, tools like, I don't know, you could, probably all of you already try to integrate Plon with Solar or whatever, with other things. So you know that you don't need to build something from scratch. It's sometimes easier to just reuse a good existing tool. So this is also the idea for us. What we wanted to have is to have something like a, a core module that will allow you to integrate existing tools with each other. And this is basically what the Penelope is about. So we are focusing on integrations. Yeah, the current status. So what we have right now. Yeah, we have those five parts. We have the reports. We have the backtracking, uh, the work log, which is the time tracking, whatever you call it. We have the possibility to schedule resources, schedule iterations, schedule tasks, and we have the document management. And we have used those tools since now. So we have Plone, we have Track, we have Pyramid, we, have, uh, we are using Google Apps, and we are using the, the Twitter Bootstrap to design them all, right? So th this is this is the the architecture from very far distance. So going a little bit more into the details, we plan we are using for 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 a pure intranet, right? It is it is it is great for for building an intranet and for a knowledge database for a knowledge base, right? So we, what we have in Plon right now is a very simple uh, Plon deployment, which allows you to easily 
integrate with the authentication system that you have in Pyramid and Prague and so on. So you have, you have single sign-on, you have only one uh, user management and security management. And then users can easily create wiki pages, pages, add comments, uh, add keywords, use the tag cloud, all the, all the things that you normally can do in Plone. Of course, everybody knows that. And we are using, we are not using any sophisticated super hyper add-ons. We are using the basic ones. And they are really working good as an intranet and as a knowledge base for us. Then we are using Pyramid. In, the, in Pyramid, we have built this, this, this core part, which allows you to integrate all the things together. So this is our, our core part. And we are using Track for backtracking and for some of the reports. But we are using 80% or 85% is just pure Track with some additional add-ons, which allows you to, to integrate the security, that allows you to integrate things from uh, from Pyramid, like it, it automatically um, takes the information from the other systems. Like I don't know, you have we have we have built a structure based on the customer project uh, and the task inside the project. So most of the information is stored outside Track. So Track needs to get this information about what is the customer name, what is the project name, and so on. And it takes it automatically from Pyramid and so on. So this is this additional 15% we need to add to track to keep these things working together. But a part of that is pure track. In Google Apps, we are starting to use it quite heavily right now. And a part of the problems with uh, OAuth authentication and APIs, which sometimes really sucks in Google, a part of that is really working swell, so it allows us, we have put a lot of things there. So a part of authentication, we are using also it for scheduling. So we have found it really a great approach also, I mean, this was an, an, an idea from the project management. I mean, they, for project managers, they, they decided that we don't want to spend time to, in, to develop sophisticated forms, uh, drag and drop things, whatever, to schedule an iteration. The best tool for us is a Google a spreadsheet. I can put the numbers there. The Google spreadsheet makes some very basic calculations and that works. The only problem later is that we, I would like to take this Google spreadsheet and reuse it directly in our pyramid application. So said, okay, we are working right now on this project. Those persons have those tasks and so on. So the integration in this part is basically taking the spreadsheets, parsing it, reading it, and just reusing the information in the in Pyramid. The last part uh, of Google Apps what we are using is the document management. So also uh, things that are related to the projects and are not part of the knowledge base, so they are not part of the project team. Sorry, but they should be exposed to the customer. We are keeping in the in Google Apps as well. I will show you later how easy you can basically create a Google document and display it outside Google in your application itself. So you can create a Google doc as a normal document, write the documentation there and show it in the context of your project inside Pyramid. So it works pretty well. The last part is Bootstrap from Twitter. I don't know how many of you are using Bootstrap from Twitter. Yeah, it's starting to be quite, uh, quite popular. We are using it as a CSS framework or whatever you call it. It's, we are really happy with that. I mean, it doesn't, ha it doesn't give you very fancy design, but the benefit is that we are minimizing the, the cost of design. We are not spending too much time on that. We just use it as it is. And even since version 2.0 is it's responsive, so it, you can even use it on mobile. It works nice. So we are happy about that. Okay, let's go more into the details. So why, why we have used Plone, right? I already told you that we, we are using it mainly for the internet and for the knowledge management. The other thing is that, of course, it's quite easy to integrate with Pyramid and all, all the other WYSGI applications. It's, it's, it's not difficult, you can find a lot of examples. And there are hundreds of atoms, right? So you go to plone.org slash products and you find whatever you need. You don't need to develop too much if you just have very simple needs. And of course, 
this was also a very natural choice for us because we have more than eight years of experience. We know Plum quite well, so yeah, for those tasks, it's the best tool. Why we are using track? Why, well, um, we are using it because, yeah, we, we like the, the, the idea uh, behind the issue tracker, how he is, uh, uh, all the, basically all the development team is very used to the, the interface already. They, they don't imagine to use something else, so it was also a quite natural choice. We like also the flexible reports. So it, we like the idea that you can just very easily create a report based on different uh, attributes. It supports, of course, WSGI, hundreds of plugins, and we have also a lot of experience with that. Why Pyramid, right? Uh, like before, easy to integrate with, 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 the other, with the other application in the stack. It has a very good support for third-party authentication. If you need to integrate with Google OAuth or Facebook or Twitter or whatever, we just use Velros or Velros. I don't know how to pronounce that. And it really rocks. I was really, I spent a lot of days trying to do it by myself, trying to, to use the OAuth dance token, whatever. It was painful. And then basically use Velros, just configure it and it works. And it really changed completely the way you, you integrate the applications with each other. It's, it's, it's great. It's, it's a great tool. We are also using the, the FA Bootstrap, which, is, which stands for From Alchemy Bootstrap. So this is, this is a very nice tool to, to very quickly build your admin interface. So something like Django admin interface, but in Pyramid. So you just define your forums in SQL Alchemy, and it will build, sorry, you define the models in SQL Alchemy, and it will build your forums with some validations automatically. So it's speed up, speed up the, the, the development. OK, so and why Google Apps? Um, yeah. It was also a natural choice for us because we are using a Gmail as a corporate email. So some of the things we, are, we have been already using. And then so adding additionally the documents and the other things was also quite natural. Uh, yeah, you can also profit from hundreds of add-ons in the marketplace. So if you don't want to develop something and you already have an application that based on the Google authentication and so on, it's really easy to just plug in something additional, right? One of the examples could be, I don't know, MailChimp, right? You can use the Google authentication with MailChimp. It's just like that, you don't need to do anything more, you just enable it, so it could be one of the reasons to use it. Yeah, the API is almost there, so it's also great. Why, why the Bootstrap Twitter? Yeah, this is it's quite popular, as I said. It has the responsive design since the last version, and the, the, the good thing is also that you can just dynamically render your own version, customizing the less, right? Um, for us right now, directly, we are not using it a lot because we are using the default one, as I said, but if you would like to customize it a little bit, it's really easy with less. Okay, so I will quickly go to the demo just to show you how it really works. So the basic, right? I don't know if you can see it. This is, you have two ways of authentication, the normal one and the OAuth using Google. This is the general design. Here you have the projects and the customers. The navigation, simple. You can go to the project and then you just, yeah. This is, everything is designed with Twitter Bootstrap and uh, from Alchemy Bootstrap. Not, nothing else, right? Here we, could, here we have an example how you can modify a project, the very basic information, the customer. I don't know if you can see it correctly, probably not from the distance, but uh, everything should be later on slides first so you can see it better. Nothing fancy, right? But this one is just, of course, the basic uh, Penelope. I'll try to go to the next one just to show you how we have integrated track. Yeah, so here we are still in, in Pyramid right now. And then we have enabled the possibility to add different applications, right? So application in a project is an integration. So track is an application in the project. So you can enable this project has track. This project has Google Docs. This project will later have Dropbox, whatever. And the application, okay, right now, as you can see, you are in track. You have still in the top bar, you have the navigation from Pyramid. 
We have also synchronized the security. So every time you'd modify a security in a project, it appears in track. So you are always uh, synchronized. Here we have the list. Of, this is, the, of course, typical track, right? There's nothing fancy here. The fancy thing is that the information, the part of the information in the ticket is taken from the, from the pyramid, right? So let's say a customer name, for example. So that's track. Then the workload, so the time entry. We like the idea behind the remember the milk interface, so you can just easily, very fast type, okay, my project, I'm working on Modena project, right? The ticket I'm working on is number, and this information is taken directly from track. Ticket number six, okay. And I have spent one hour and 15 minutes. Enter, uh, and it's done, right? We like the idea behind a very simple interface that allows a developer to not switch his task. I mean, he doesn't need to go to another application, spend five minutes to log in and so on, no. At the end, even we would like to have a very simple bar somewhere that you can just render it in, in your browser and then every time you just do it, something, quickly enter, enter, uh, quickly input the, the information and enter, right? Just to have as much details as possible. All those widgets, yeah, this is just pure FA bootstrap. Okay, we can skip this one. The next thing is the reports. We have right now, I think, half of the reports we want. So, for example, this is the first example is the reports per developer. So, the developer can see what he was doing today, in the last days, and so on, based on his workload. Then you have a predefined reports. So you can see what that what the person was doing, what was doing per customer and per project. And here, for example, I don't know if I can stop it. I think yes, just for a second. Yeah, here we have the, the reports uh, per project. And we are using the pivot table, so you can easily, I mean, the project manager can easily see what the person was doing per project, per customer request, per iteration, and so on, and so on. So if you will notice it, in a moment, here yeah, I'm filtering per person right now. Yeah, and right now you see that this guy for those customer requests was doing those things, right? It works pretty well. The information is taken from different places, from track uh, and from pyramid. You can save it later. But the general idea behind it is that we want to have uh, as much information as possible, and this is also one of the key features of, of Penelope, because as I said at the beginning, this is a long-term project. So we don't know exactly what kind of reports we will need in the future. Just to give you an example, even on that conference, we have an idea, ah, we need this report that will aggregate the information from this and that. Well, we can do it in a few hours, right? Okay, great. Before, it was impossible, because you will need to probably aggregate this information, I don't know, to comma separated value, parse it, do something. It was difficult. Right now, it's just, just do the report and it will it will stay. This is the Google part. I don't know if you remember I was talking about scheduling, so you can we are using the Google Google spreadsheet. This is a yeah. This is if you don't have the the Google token safe in your profile, the, the system is asking you if you want to grant access. You grant the access and then. This is just an example of the, uh, the spreadsheet we are using to plan the iterations. You can work in your application. You can see you are still in Pyramid. You are modifying it here. And then the other part of scheduling is that for every iteration, we are generating a separate spreadsheet. So then we can also keep the history, what was happening two weeks ago, two months ago, and so on. And this is the way to generate it. Here's just a list of the folder from Google, from Google Docs. And as you can see right now, this is the same view in Google itself. It shows you the two spreadsheets and the two spreadsheets here. So it's really easy to achieve it. And the last part is the responsive design, as I said. This is pure Twitter bootstrap. Here you have the normal, let's say, desktop view. You can, of course, resize it, and the application is still working. You have the whole navigation bar uh, collapsible, and of course, all the forms are working, all the reports are working, even the very heavy reports are properly 
scaling into your mobile version without problems. And I think we have only a few seconds left, so I think I can skip that one. Okay, so what's next? So we, we have this, those features already are built. We will be testing in a few weeks. The plan for the next integration is that we would like to also give a possibility to substitute track with other back tracker. So let's say Redmine, you would like to use it. We are trying to keep the integrations quite uh, weak, so you, there's no heavy integration. It's not that there's a direct connection between Pyramid and track. You can theoretically uh, substitute track with Redmine when you implement uh, the connection. We want to also add Dropbox as uh, for the document management. So you, you, we should be able to just create an application in your project that is a Dropbox application. And then you just drag and drop files there and you can see them in your pyramid project view. We want to also integrate with GitHub and with Yammer for the social collaboration. We are already using Yammer in, in, in Red Turtle. We would like to also integrate information from Yammer inside the project, inside the pyramid project as well. So those are the plans. And that's it. The first question probably is if I like Star Wars. Yes, I like Star Wars. <laughs> and if you have other questions, I'm listening. Um, my question is about Google Apps because Google Apps is a free service as far as I know and uh, also the spreadsheet thing. Uh, aren't you afraid that Google could shut down these services or change them in a way that makes your integration useless? Yes, thanks for the question. Yeah, uh, we are not using the free version of Google Apps. We are using the, the business, I don't know what, what is the business plan, what is the price level behind it, but we are using the business version of it. So we are not scared about that. Uh, of course, there is some risk that Google can shut down this, this part of the, uh, shut down this, 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 this application and so on, of course. But the point is that uh, at, we, have, we have this discussion also in Red Turtle when we have migrated our mail from local base mail server to Google. But we decided that the benefit you are receiving, I mean, the, the features, uh, the functionalities you are getting are much bigger than the risk you are taking. So we have decided, yeah, we would like to do that. Are there more questions? Okay, um, sorry for my bad English, <laughs> but I have a question. Uh, how do you all, um, can solve the problem that so many applications have an overlap between the functionality? Uh, like a red mine has an issue tracking system and chant you and so on, and uh, other systems have the same function. How, how do you want them disabled uh, or, or how do you want them integrate together that the best part of each component is only used or <laughs> okay thanks for the question i don't know if i understand correctly but i think i do uh, anyway i try to an to, to answer it what we are trying to do, we don't want to integrate everything with everything, right? We don't want to make a spaghetti application that, that you can do a cappuccino. The point is that uh, we, are, we are also, we have an experience with some kind of software, like with Track, right? We like Track for particular reasons, and we are taking those reasons into Penelope, right? So uh, the, 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 the Redmine uh, example was similar. I mean, there's another company, in this case it was Biodec, which is the, the other partner of the project. They like to use Redmine, and they are free to do that, and that's why, because they found it for good for, I don't know, reports, I, I don't know, I, I'm not using Redmine at all, so I don't know exactly what it is good for. But they have their reasons, and they would like to integrate it. So it's, up, it's about, I mean, it's, it's their task to choose their, the features they like and introduce them to Penelope, 
right? So like with Dropbox, we don't want to put everything. We just, we are, I don't know, we will just put maybe only as a documentation uh, management, and nothing else. I don't know if that solves your question somehow. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you very much. Credits.